Hey everybody, Dan Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the amazing Shinsengumi Heroes in Love. We're along Heisuke Todo's route on Chapter 7, I Don't Want to Regret It. Things have been pretty crazy along his route. Totally, totally different from everybody else's stories. So I'm not sure where we're going to go from here exactly, but uh, let's see. I think we left off with uh, another fire breaking out in the last episode. Uh, let's see. You can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Smoke drifted with the wind. I smelled something burning. This is... It's a fire! I ran toward the voices at once. There has to be something I can do to help. As I ran, I looked for wells. I looked around the area after I got near the fire. The firefighters and the Shinsengumi hadn't arrived yet. The men pumped water out and poured it onto the flames. The women and children were shaken up and tried to escape. Go upwind! I shouted and pointed upwind. Everyone downwind should take their valuables and run away just in case. The women were relieved and moved as they took their children's hands. People ran upwind, and some people returned to their homes and took their valuables. One woman clung to me. Um, my child! My child is... Well, that's better than rescuing a kimono, but... Huh? What happened to your child? Why are you coming to me? Why aren't you clinging to some man to get your child? My child is still inside the fire! A woman pointed toward the burning house. And why aren't you going in yourself? I would go in to rescue my own child. Even if I poured water on it, the flames would keep raging. There was a child inside those flames. I got it. I took a nearby bucket and poured water over my head. I'll get him out of there. Go somewhere safe. Those words naturally rolled off my tongue. I would be lying if I said I wasn't scared. Nevertheless, I knew some powerful people. I have to be strong too. I have to be on equal footing with Heisuke. It's impossible for you. Then why did you come to me? I wanted to tell her she was wrong. I thought about what Heisuke would say. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll protect you. Just watch me. But you're not here. It felt like I could hear Heisuke's proud voice. It felt like I was wearing a pale blue jacket. I jumped into the flames. It was already a sea of fire. The dancing crimson filled my eyes. The heat felt like it would burn my skin. I felt a slight fever and sweat trickle down my forehead. I could hear a child crying from inside the building. I brushed off the falling embers as I ran. Mom! Mommy! It was a little girl crying. I suddenly remembered when I was little. Are you okay? The girl continued crying. I was sure she felt lonely by herself in this heat. Let's go outside together, okay? Can you walk? It hurts! It hurts! She sobbed. It seems like she was hurt somewhere. I took her hand, and her hot hand grabbed me back. She must have been in pain or just scared, because she wouldn't move an inch. I guess you can't walk. I'll give you a piggyback ride. It hurts! Mommy! I kneeled down and pointed my back toward the crying girl. The fire slowly burnt my skin. If this continued, we would both be burned alive. I tried to force her onto my back, but she struggled and became violent. It hurts! Mommy! Mommy! She sobbed even more. Let's go see your mom, okay? Don't get so violent! It hurts! Mommy! Stop crying, please! I wanted to cry. I didn't have enough strength to force her onto my back. Can't I carry her in my arms? I didn't know what to do in order to get the girl to come with me. I guess I can't do it after all. I gave up. No, I give up. The two of us would die here. There was nothing we could do. Should I leave her and go back alone? No. You already came this far, even though her mother was waiting? What should I do? How can we both escape? Suddenly. Chizuru, where are you? Heisuke! Uh, save this girl. Heisuke, save this girl. That's just like you. Always thinking of others. Heisuke jumped over a falling beam. Watch me be heroic. Yeah, actually be heroic this time. Heisuke was dripping with sweat and breathing hard. I could tell how fast he'd rushed here. I felt guilty. You're way too reckless, Shizuru. You're the one to talk. Don't make me mad. I'm sorry. I'll have you reflect on it in public. What? Are you trying to publicly humiliate me? We have to get out of here. He took my hand like it was nothing, but I shook my head. Save this little girl. 
I can run on my own. Heisuke looked confused. I only came to save you. I knew you would do this. Well, I came to see this little girl. I petted the little girl's head. She grabbed onto my hand. So save this girl too. Is that what you want? Heisuke questioned me. Ah, uh, and that's what I want. I told him flat out, and Heisuke laughed refreshingly. Okay, I'll save that girl. Heisuke kneeled in front of the little girl and patted her on the head. I'll carry you out. Grab on tight. The girl faced Heisuke's back. She timidly grabbed onto his pale blue jacket. Why is she cooperating with him when she didn't cooperate for me? It looked like he was used to this kind of thing. Heisuke quickly held the girl up. I'll say this. He looked at me. I'm only saving her because you wanted to save her. I only came here to save you and bring you back safe and sound. We are not heroic then. I know. He's not a very good guy. They said he was a good guy. You guys are all liars. You should know the fire has spread quite a bit. Everything was deep red. No matter where I looked, there were flames, flames, and more flames. It would be hard to escape. Heisuke still came to save me in spite of that. Thank you. I just do things so I won't regret it later. Oh, that's right. Heisuke smiled mischievously and came closer to me. Better not try anything in front of that little girl. I don't want to regret it, so let's hit each other. What? My lips suddenly felt heavy. I was shocked and opened my eyes. My eyes met his. I panicked and looked away. I heard Heisuke chuckle. He gave me one more peck. What? He said hit. What was that about? Yeah, he said hit. He said let's hit each other. But he kissed me? He gave me just one more peck. It, in a place like this? My mouth opened in surprise and his tongue slipped in. I felt a different heat than that from the flames. It spread in my mouth and filled my body. Even at a time like this, my body started to shiver. Ugh. His saliva came into my mouth. His sticky saliva flowed into me like it was the water of life. Ugh. Ugh. My parched throat swallowed it instinctively. His thick saliva came in again. Come on, we don't have time for this! The flames have already spread quite a bit like you said and there's a little girl to be rescued here. I swallowed it with a gulp. It was such sweet, sweet water. Our lips slowly separated. There was a trace of saliva on our lips. It soon broke. <laughs> if we continue, I don't think I can hold myself back. Let's stop here. Heisuke fixed the little girl's position on his back. What are you going to do at a time like this? The girl is here too. I blushed and got mad. Heisuke's cheeks puffed up. I did it because it was a time like this. It helped having some water in your mouth, didn't it? He was right. It was only a little saliva, but my parched throat felt better. Sorry. I apologized to Heisuke and he smiled. Well, I had other motives as well. Jeez! He laughed like a little kid. I lightly punched him and lifted my head up again. But thank you. Thanks to you, I feel a little better. I never thought you would thank me for something like this. Heisuke's eyes widened and he adorned a smug smile. Then, let's do it one more time. No! Tch. Heisuke was cute when he was disappointed. I smiled a little bit. Oh, we don't have time to play around. You only just realized that? Heisuke's expression became serious. I wanted to take the safest route out, but that seems a bit tough now. Yeah. I have to hold this girl up, so I can't hold your hand. Do your best and make sure you follow behind me. Yes, I know. No matter what. You can't fall behind. Heisuke jumped over a falling beam. I couldn't jump like that wearing a kimono. I ripped the edge of my kimono to shorten it and followed Heisuke. He cleverly found places where the flames were small and passed through them. He was fast. As I desperately tried to keep up, the distance between us gradually grew. In an instant, flames grew larger where they once had been small. My skin hurt as it burned. The heat rained down as if it was stabbing me. The house was so narrow when I entered and it was so big now. I'm not outside yet? It became harder and harder to breathe. Suddenly, clang, clang. I could no longer see Heisuke's back. A large beam fell between us. It was wrapped in intense flames. Heisuke! Chizuru, are you hurt? I'm fine, but... The flames engulfed the beam. It would be hard to get over it. How can I catch up to Heisuke? Ah! Ending there... 
Alright, well, the next video will be his first good ending. Crimson, I'll make you all mine. So I guess we can expect some more lasciviousness from Heisuke here. Hopefully this time in a much more acceptable way. Well, I'm hopping over there right now, so hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. They're really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.